like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall Fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift him high With all creation crying out We praise you Every war We'll watch the giants fall A few cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Welcome to Faith. We're so glad you're here this morning, and uh, we're so glad to worship with you online. If you're new to us, we want to welcome you. Do us a favor by filling out our connection card. It's located on our website on the contact page. And if you have a prayer request, we'd love to pray with you. Please do fill that out. Let's continue to worship together. Let's continue to give God praise today. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need remind How I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire
There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. Yeah, I know I will never be alone. claimed its victory the king of love had given up his life the darkest day in history there on the cross they made for sinners for every curse his blood it's all One final breath and it was finished Not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What sacrifice is made As the heavens roll
Hail King Jesus All hail the Lord of heaven and earth All hail King Jesus All hail the Savior of the world We hail you Lord We hail you Lord We hail you crown you crown you crown you Lord We hail you Lord We praise your name We praise your name So we crown you Lord We crown you Lord King of kings The Lord of lords Crown him with many crowns The Lamb upon his throne Crown him with many crowns Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Just sing that again. Crown him with many crowns. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. We crown you, we crown you, Lord. Crown him with many crowns. The Lamb upon His throne. God, we crown you Lord of Lords. Jesus, today we come before you, thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord, to humble ourselves before you, knowing that we are so far from perfect and that we mess up and that we don't deserve grace and mercy, but you offer it. It's a gift unto us today. And so we bless your name and we praise your name and we give you thanks because the favor that you show us, because the grace that you show us and the mercy. We love you, Lord. We bless your name pray all of these things in the strong name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. God bless you. God bless you. It's hard to imagine that we're beginning to regather as a church family. That doesn't mean it's appropriate for everyone at this time, but we're beginning that season of reentry. Uh, the idea of reopening what a challenging year we have been facing. It was in some ways easier to say it's time to take a break. Uh, it's even more complex to say, how do we regather? And we wanna regather in a way that is certainly honoring to God and respectful of our government and thoughtful of people. And so as we regather together, I've been reflecting again on the role of government in our lives and in our decision-making, as there's also been social upheaval. What is the role of government in that setting? As we've been studying the book of Acts over the course of this year, I realized that the early church faced huge challenges in a world where the government was not always favorable to the church. Yet there was a respect that was displayed by both Jesus and the apostles toward governing authorities. So travel with me today as we've been praying for our leaders, praying for wisdom. Let's look at what God's purpose and role is of government. Paul is now in the latter parts of his life and ministry, and he is... Uh, finishing his third missionary journey and he is headed back to Jerusalem and he has faced many challenges. He faced persecution 
and as he faced persecution back in the area of Israel, he was facing so many challenges that we're going to see that he has an appeal to Caesar. So walk with me. Uh, we're in, uh, I could read one section in Acts chapter 25, verses 9 through 12. I'll use that as the starting point, but there'll be several passages of Scripture that we're going to look at today. So I'll just read a passage from Acts chapter 25, verses 9 uh, uh, through 12. But Festus, wishing to do the Jews a favor, said to Paul, Do you wish to go up to Jerusalem and there be tried on these charges before me? But Paul said, I am standing before Caesar's tribunal, where I ought to be tried. To the Jews I have done no wrong, as you yourself know very well. If then I am a wrongdoer and have committed anything for which I deserve to die, I do not seek to escape death. But if there is nothing to these charges against me, no one can give me up to them. I appeal to Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with his counsel, answered, To Caesar you have appealed, to Caesar you shall go. Wow. What was the role of government? Well, I would begin by saying this. God has given us government to restrain evil and to protect the citizens. God gave us government to restrain evil and to uh, care for the people that are under its authority. It's a God-given authority. Look back with me in Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas are imprisoned in Philippi. You remember that story. And uh, when he, the earthquake released Paul from the prison cell, Paul and Silas do not flee. When the government says you may leave, Paul stops and says, wait a minute, I'm a Roman citizen. I've been mistreated as a Roman citizen. I demand that the governing officials who put me in prison come and release me from prison. That was profound. Paul, as a Roman citizen, rec recognized and claimed the right of citizenship. I'll pause for a moment and say this. Where is our ultimate citizenship? Our ultimate citizenship is heaven. Uh, in Colossians chapter 1, Paul says that Jesus has rescued us from the kingdom of this world and transferred us into the kingdom of God's Son. Jesus is our king. We are ultimately under his authority. Yet these citizens of heaven are also citizens in this world. And Paul understood the role of government was to restrain evil. And interestingly, throughout Paul's ministry, that takes place over and over again. Let me just read one other case here in Romans, in Acts chapter 22. Up to this word, they listened to him. Then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. They're talking about Paul. And as they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the tribune ordered Paul to be brought into the barracks, saying that he should be examined by flogging to find out why they were shouting against him like this. But when they had stretched out for the whips, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, Is it lawful for you to flog a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned? When the centurion heard this, he went to the tribune and said to him, What are you about to do? For this man is a Roman citizen. So the tribune came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? And he said, Yes. The tribune answered, I bought this citizenship for a large sum. Paul said, But I am a citizen by birth. So those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately. And the tribune also said, also was afraid, for he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had been bound. 
Here's Paul, a citizen of heaven, declaring that he's also a Roman citizen. Now, many had to do great acts of valor to attain Roman citizenship. Others had to pay a great sum of money. But Paul was a citizen by birth. And that was actually considered to be a more noble citizenship. So he came from a family of Roman citizens when he was raised in Tarsus. We are citizens of the United States of America. We, we live in the most powerful nation in the world. We have the privilege of being American citizens. But in this context, we have the responsibility of citizenship as well. And the role of government, as it was for Paul, is to care for the citizens, to watch over the citizens. And so Paul took every measure that he could take, every right of citizenship, and claimed those rights of citizenship. And as far as the government was exercising protection for uh, the citizens, it was fulfilling its purpose. And so Paul, when he appeals to Caesar, is actually appealing for government to fulfill its role. Let me jump ahead to another passage of Scripture where Paul explains for us why God has designed government for us. God has, through history, established institutions for the care of people. In, he first established marriage in the family as the ordained ordering of his world. He then provided government, and he's also provided the church. Each of these are institutions that God has provided for our well-being. So here in Romans chapter 13, Paul describes that role of government. And let me read that for you. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there's no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you'll receive approval. Now that's government functioning in a God-ordained way that it, it supports good action and hinders bad action. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he, that is the government, does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant, or King James reads, the minister of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also the, for the sake of conscience. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are, are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. I think it's quite interesting that Paul describes governing officials as ministers. Typically, we call a pastor a minister, but the Bible doesn't call pastors ministers. It calls governing officials ministers. I was visiting a, a North African country of Tunisia, and we were to go, it, it not as tourists, not overtly uh, as pastors. And so one of the pastors entering the country uh, kind of forgot the instructions, and he announces to those that were asking him, so what is it that you do? He said, oh, I'm a minister. And the rest of us were like, oh no, <laughs> what's gonna happen next? And they gave him the very best room in the hotel. 
because in their mind, he had just told them that he was a governing minister. They referred to the minister of defense, the minister of health, minister of finance, and he just announced that he was a minister from the United States. So he got the best treatment. Anyway, what is the instruction here toward government? I see these principles. First, that governing officials are divinely ordained. Secondly, that those who disobey the government ultimately are disobeying the God who placed those governing officials over us. Governments, as God's ministers, thirdly, are divinely authorized to reward those who do good and to punish evildoers. And fourthly, the sword symbolizes the state's right to punish evildoers. So as we pray for our governing officials, as they're trying to make tough decisions in these challenging times, decisions that were focused for quite a while on how to reopen society, and now uh, trying to address social unrest, the role of government is to protect the citizens, should be protecting uh, from from conception to the very elderly, to each one governing officials God designed for the protection of people. So what, my second question is what is our responsibility to government? It, we first saw that the role of government was protection and we saw Paul appeal to Caesar. What is our responsibility to government? Jesus said it very simply, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and render unto God that which is God. You'd think that the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus, is now acknowledging that his father ordained government, and the context is that Jesus was asked to pay taxes to Caesar. In fact, he was asked whether he should give taxes to Caesar or not. And his response was, whose picture is on the coin? And of course, they pull out a coin, and whose picture is on the coin? Well, Caesar's picture is on the coin. Interestingly, under that inscription was also Tiberius Caesar Augustus, the son of the divine Augustus. Literally, Caesar was claiming to be the Son of God. And of course, Jesus is the true Son of God. Yet, Jesus supported paying taxes to Caesar, but opposing worshiping Caesar as God. Give taxes to Caesar and worship to God. Render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. What is our responsibility to government? The Apostle Peter says in 1 Peter 2, Submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men, whether to the king as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and commend those who do right. What does it mean for a Christian to honor governing authorities. I know that in New York State it has troubled us when governing officials have made ungodly decisions. And it, it gives us a troubled feeling. And I want us to think, however, we're still to honor our governing authorities. We're still to show respect to governing authorities because God has ordained that government. He expects obedience to, to governing authorities. Obedience is required. Interestingly, the apostles were living under ungodly leaders, and yet God wanted respect for those governing officials. However, God does not approve of government's wrongdoing. God does not require obedience to sinful laws. Think about through Scripture. You think of Joseph, second in command uh, he was served in government. There was Daniel, 
leading the governing official, a leading governing official in Babylon, Esther, a queen under Xerxes. There were godly people like Cornelius serving in the military. There's all these godly people serving in government. But I want to ask the question, when should we obey God rather than man? Early on in the book of Acts, uh, the apostles Peter and John were preaching the gospel. They were preaching salvation through Jesus Christ. The Sanhedrin uh, pulled them aside and forbid them from preaching in his name. And what does Peter say in response to being forbidden to preach Christ? He says, we must obey God rather than man. So God has established government. But above, above those governing officials is God's ultimate authority. When these governing officials go contrary to the higher authority, we must obey God rather than man. When Daniel was told not to pray, he continued to pray. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were told to bow down to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar, they refused, even at the potential cost of their lives. Even as Christians around the world face ungodly governments, there should still be respect for government, but not obedience to ungodly law. Let me give you some examples of civil disobedience. The midwives refused to kill the innocent babies in Exodus chapter 1. Obadiah refused to permit Queen Jezebel to kill the prophets. And now in the book of Acts, they refused to stop proclaiming the gospel. So what is our response in these troubling times? I, I know that Christians have debated back and forth as to how respectful they should be to governing officials, even as they plan regathering together. There are those that are uh, seeking peaceful demonstration uh, to convey their convictions uh, contrary to government action. Let me give these overall observations and conclusions. First, obey laws under God. We should have a peaceful response and we should obey laws under God. We should pray for oppressive governments. Paul said to pray for all who are in authority, for kings especially. Uh, our governing officials need God's wisdom in these troubling times. We should work peacefully and legally to make changes. Fourth, we should claim all the rights of citizenship. And we live in a nation that's given us freedom of religion. We should claim all the rights that we have as citizens. We should utilize all the privileges of the law to defend Christian liberties, as Paul appealed to Caesar. We should disobey commands that are contrary to the law of God. We should patiently endure suffering, and we should be a witness for Christ in all circumstances. So as I was reflecting on the role of government and how Paul appealed to Caesar, Jesus told us to render unto Caesar that which is Caesar, and as we reflected on when we should obey the higher authority, obey God rather than man, I wanted to just reflect and as we regather together that we should regather together respectfully and lovingly, respectfully and lovingly. God has provided us the family, uh, government and the church. We should be regathering respectful of these authorities and the regulatory guidance that they're giving to us. We should be respectful. 
Hebrews chapter 10, though, challenges us that we should regather when we can respectfully and lovingly do that. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful, Hebrews 10, 23. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. The church regathering is a biblical mandate, and it's a Christian privilege. So as we're gathering together, we're doing so in uh, obedience to God's command. But we're to do it respectfully of our governing authorities. Hebrews 13 says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls. I want us to be respectful as we regather of our leaders and our elders here at Faith. I want us to understand that there may be different approaches to regathering. There may be different uh, perspectives. But as we do so, we are under their authority and we want to follow their guidance. There's so many approaches we could take in regathering. But our leaders are prayerfully guiding us on how we can regather when you feel comfortable to regather. So let's be respectful of our church authorities in this regathering process. Let's be thoughtful of them. And let's be loving toward one another. There are folks that will feel very uncomfortable in uh, this environment of the COVID virus. And so the reason we will wear masks as at least as a portion of our times will be, be not because it's comfortable for us but we want to be thoughtful of others let's let's look at respect for our, our governing officials respect for our elders and as thoughtful as we can be to be loving toward one another and then fulfill together this process over these next season of time which we will begin regathering together it's a joy to have this opportunity to regather together we want to do it in a way that honors god and cares for people around us let's pray together lord you've taken us through a, a very challenging season and it's still not over and there's even more complexity in our uncertain world. But you have given us governing officials to protect the citizens, and we want to honor them in that role. At the same time, we want to be obedient to you as you call us to regather together. So help us to follow the leadership of our elders as they prayerfully guide us in regathering. And then help us to be loving toward one another. There are many who have different uh, health needs, are more vulnerable, are more uncertain, have reasons to be concerned. Help us just to be thoughtful and caring. Uh, I think of how uh, Paul said, I become all things to all men that I might win some. There might be areas where we, we have preferences Help us to yield those preferences to honor you and to be honoring one another in Jesus' name. Uh, we thank you for uh, the privilege it is to worship you. We thank you that uh, though some will continue to receive our online, that they would still feel online services, they would still feel connected to our church family as some begin the regathering process. In all of this, we want Jesus to be honored and your people to be loved and our testimony for you to be clear to this world that we follow and serve you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.